how do we raise mentally strong kids? That is a huge concept. And when I say we, I'm talking about us as individuals, um, as parents, as mentors, as teachers. This is a whole community project, basically. Like, and we all know, especially based on recent things that are happening in our world, is that we really need to take this seriously. How do we raise mentally strong kids? I know that there is um, a lot of you know things put on parents and good parenting skills, but also a lot of pressure on the schools to now start incorporating this social emotional learning. And I've looked at several of these curriculums. Um, they're great. They're just not the whole picture. I'm Dr. B. Christy Bundukmara, psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 20 years of clinical experience, but my real experience comes from raising seven children, two biological um, and five adopted. And several of those adopted children actually had PTSD, reactive attachment disorder. And so I have a lot of parenting experience around some of these very difficult mental health concerns. But what I'm trying to do here in this whole movement of raising mentally strong kids is to teach mental strength. We talk about mental strength at being an attribute that we respect in people, all people, adults, um, young children, but we don't teach it anywhere. So it's almost like you either have it or you don't have it. Um, you either have resilience or you don't have resilience. I know in the military communities, we're beginning to start teaching about resilience. What does that mean? What is, you know, and resilience is that ability to kind of adjust and adapt to the realities of your life. In the course of raising my seven children, I experienced unimaginable hardships from the loss of a child, uh, another loss of a child, to um, you know, rebellion and uh, pretty significant medical concerns and lots of stresses as I was raising my children. And raising my children was my priority, um, but I really had to learn how to practice what I preach. I remember when I went and um, completed the adoption of the five children over a, two, a course of two years, I remember almost having a prideful ignorance on, I am a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I can do this. I know how to raise kids. <laughs> um, and now I'm a grandmother. Uh, and so I was, I did it, uh, but I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I also learned a lot along the way. And so when I was going through that process, I actually uh, was using what I now call the mentally strong method on myself. It's a cognitive behavioral approach um, where you're learning how to change your thinking so that you, your choices are in line with what you really want. And so I was practicing this on myself over the course of 15 years of really um, just pushing through this unimaginable hardship. And what I learned in that process is not only um, was I getting better every day, was I able to um, conquer and feel stronger even as I was going through things, but even being able to address symptoms of depression and anxiety in myself. And so, you know, as uh, my kids grew up and I have... Um, lost a few children, as I said, I now feel the purpose of teaching this mentally strong method to adults so that they can learn mental strength. But in that process, I also realized that there's this huge gap that we should be teaching mental strength as early as five years old. And so um, over the course of a couple years, I have uh, created what we're calling Raising Mentally Strong Kids, which is basically the curriculum for using the Mentally Strong Method and teaching the Mentally Strong Method to children as young as five years old. And it's based on developmental uh, psychology, like what happens in that zero to five years old 
what do we need to be doing for our children? We need to be providing safety and trust and modeling behavior. What do we need to be doing in that five to seven year old um, period of time? We need to start teaching them how to identify their emotions and appropriate ways to react and you know, learning that you actually can process these emotions. Learning to know yourself. I think that we're missing the boat there, right? We're focusing on behaviors of children and what is right and wrong rather than who are you? Uh, and that should start at that age between five and seven. And then what should we be doing you know, between eight and 11? These are foundational years. That eight to 11 is when they start to have the ability to understand that how they think um, can impact what they choose, how they behave, and what's going on in their environment. Um, it can impact their mood. And so they're learning all of that between that eight and 11. So we should be kind of upping the ante as far as what we're teaching, not just teaching how to identify your emotions, but um, now you have to learn how to process them appropriately um, for yourself and how to seek support when you need it, but also ultimately um, being responsible for your own emotional and mental health. And addressing um, that we are spiritual beings. I think we, we um, are, raising a generation that is a little afraid or, or leaders or teachers, parents are afraid to address the spiritual um, because they don't want to create conflict. They don't um, want to be accused of proselytizing their own personal beliefs. And so young children are not being taught anything. And um, we need to at least address that we are spiritual beings and that we should be looking um, outside of ourselves. Uh, and then age 12 to 15, this is where kids can begin practicing, almost like little adults, and, and having that expectation that between this 12 to 15, they actually have insight and control of um, how they feel and what they choose. Um, and so the Raising Mentally Strong curriculum really shows how to create that foundation and then it also shows how to identify and address any holes in, in that you know, developmental growth. And when I say holes in developmental growth, I'm talking about all of us. If you were to look at this growth wheel, um, and I always like to go to the, you know, uh, do you know yourself, do you like yourself, and do you love yourself? And most adults cannot, do not say all three. Right, um, and so you know we we have to also take a step back and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, identifying where we have deficits in our mental strength. I think many of us are just pushing through. Um, you know, just we're, strength to us is like compartmentalizing and pushing through and just not giving up, and that is definitely part of it. Never give up, right? But insight is the, where real strength comes from. And so in the Raising Mentally Strong Kids curriculum, we begin to teach insight uh, very early. And so that by the time kids are 12 to 15, they actually have the solid foundation to confidently say they are mentally strong, right? Mental strength, mental health is a lifetime journey. It's not a you're 15 and now you're good, right? Because the reality is, is as we have, you know, a personal vision and dreams for our life, you know, sometimes the realities of that start to hit us and we have to adjust. And so mental strength is a journey. And so I strongly encourage anyone working with kids, if you want to get involved in raising mentally strong kids, you start with yourself. You take the Healing Through the Mentally Strong Method course. You learn how to have insight into your strength find your strength, demonstrate that strength through insight because kids know and it's very hard to lead someone in a direction that you're not going, right? So first you have to um, learn about yourself, learn you know how to find your own mental strength and then you can teach that uh, to children. And the curriculum is laid out by 
uh, this growth wheel, as well as you know each age group and how you present that. But basically, we're teaching them the mentally strong method, um, age appropriately through um, from starting at age five. And what is the mentally strong method? It's the ability to think through your problems. So that's the first element, you know, to effectively think. Because we all know how to think, but we might not be doing it effectively, we might not be solution focused, and we might actually be causing a low mood or, or sadness or, or dep even depression symptoms because we're thinking too much. Then, after you know how to effectively think, how do you organize those thoughts so that you can make choices? I think we spend a lot of time uh, teaching children about appropriate choices. Like I was reviewing this curriculum and they started in second grade on teaching the dangers of smoking, right? But the problem is not that kids who choose to smoke uh, believe that it's healthy. They, they know that it's not healthy. Um, but they have been taught that smoking is bad and maybe they think that they're a bad person and so therefore they're making bad choices, right? So it could be way more complicated than just teaching what we think is the appropriate choice. It's having insight into what, what we're thinking and how that's impacting the decisions that we make. So that's just one example of why we need to get in there and really teach mental strength through thinking, then organizing, and then making choices based on that insight and in those categories. Um, and then learning about values and who those children want to be, okay? Um, and that grows into, as an adult, you know, what is our personal vision? What, you know, where do we want to go? But as young children, we're looking at values. And instead of teaching values as black and white for children, we can begin to say, what kind of person do you want to be? And if they say they want to be a kind person, then we could say, okay, is that behavior that you just did, is that evidence of a kind person, right? So it's, it's again, teaching the children how to make those choices, why they're making those choices, and whether it's them making the choice rather than just responding to their environment. So raising mentally strong kids curriculum goes through all of that and how to do that in each age group. But I'll tell you, if you take the class, I'm gonna challenge you as the adult working with kids, and that's anybody from a parent to a mentor to a teacher, that you're taking care of yourself first. Um, and then we can begin empowering the next generations to be mentally strong. And we do that, you know, I love to use like acronyms so that uh, I can remember things and um, because it, you know, this is a journey. Uh, it is not as easy. I remember I read a book uh, when my kids were young and I, I, I finished the book and it was like, oh, if I just do this, this and this, my kids will be great. And then real life happens and that's not at all how it goes, right? Not all behavior modifications work for all children. Um, the, the emotives and the intent of the child is different. Uh, so not all behavior has the same motive or intent behind it. And so it's way more complicated than that. So I want you to look at this as a, a shift um, in ourselves in learning insight and mental strength. And we do that through the RESPECT acronym. RESPECT, uh, the R stands for relationships are a priority. If you have a relationship with a child, even when you make mistakes, which you will, uh, that, sh that relationship, that influence will continue because you have a relationship and you made that a priority. The E stands for empower versus power. And I remember the first time I had an open discussion with some professionals around this, I envisioned, and this is how it was with my teenage girls, that this empower versus power was like a, 
um, a tug of war. I'm trying to pull them to make what I think is positive decisions and they're pulling me the other direction in rebellion. And this very wise LCSW, she said, no, I think of it more like a dance. Like we're trying to lead them um, and we, we still need to have authority, but we can have it in a gentle nudging. The S stands for stress is growth. We have to allow our children to experience stress, um, identify how it makes them feel, process it, so that they can learn to have mental strength. Mental strength does not come from protection. It comes from pain. And so learning, and, and life will have pain. Everyone will experience stress. And so we have to begin teaching children that stress is growth. Um, we talk about this in the military environment. Instead of post-traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic growth. What can you do? How can you find your strength so that you grow from what just happened to you? The P stands for positive, realistic words. I remember when I was young, I thought I was stupid and I thought I was fat. And my mom would say, no, you're skinny. Well, I really wasn't skinny, so it was kind of like she, I, I understand her intent. Um, and she also would say, no, no, you're smart. But the, the evidence from my peers was telling me, no, I, I definitely wasn't skinny. Um, and, and I wasn't keeping up with my peers in school. And so even though she was trying to give positive words, she was not giving them in realistic ways that I could, I could really um, take them on and believe them. So maybe, you know, she could have said, well, um, let's find another word that describes your body type. Uh, maybe we could have said, you know, medium athletic, or we could have, you know, together come up with a word that I could actually believe and then begin telling myself that. One of the things that I tell parents when they, you know, they're like, I tell them all the time that they're pretty, or I tell them all the time, it's not what you're saying, it's what they're saying to themselves. So we've got to find a word that they can believe and they can tell themselves. So that's how you do that positive, realistic words. Continue to educate yourself in this process of raising mentally strong kids and that these are all individual humans that um, will be adults making their own decisions and how can we form them into their best potential. Have compassion on yourself. You will make mistakes. You will hurt children's feelings. Um, have compassion and grace on yourself, ask forgiveness, and just keep moving forward. And last but not least, the T stands for time is a tool. We not, you're not going to fix everything in a moment. And um, you know, it, it's going to be 10, 15, 20 years of trying to be an influence for this child to really make that difference. So if you're just the teacher for one year, you might be that teacher that they remember for, th for their lifetime. So don't discount those small interactions either, okay? Time is a tool. Respect acronym, respect uh, for the child as a, as a human being, an individual, um, and respect for, for authority. We do have to teach that respect. Um, so I hope you want to learn more about the Raising Mentally Strong curriculum. Uh, set up a call so we can kind of explain how we can come into schools or organizations or you know you can send people to our classes um, so that we can begin to change the culture um, of mental health and mental strength through teaching mental strength if you got to the end of the video you obviously enjoyed some of the content i have a lot of free content out there i am really trying to empower everyone to find their mental strength so subscribe get the actual notifications and let's, it, let's embrace this journey of mental strength see you there